cover this cup with the blood of Christ. I seal any open demonic portal with the blood of Christ. I was just in uh, prayer. I was in worship. And the song was talking about, it made a mention about the faith of Abraham. And it finally made sense to me from the perspective of the mother of a prodigal. I have my, my little one who's with me, but I have a prodigal 22-year-old who's been lost since he's 15. And it's been a long time praying for him and waiting on God's promise for him. And thinking about Abraham taking Isaac to be sacrificed and to do the sacrifice himself. As the mother of a prodigal, it has a new meaning for me. And I've never made the connection until now. But I truly under I think I truly understand now the pain that he felt, this child of promise, that he was uh, told to hand over to, to, uh, to lay on the altar. Bless you, sis, that Abraham was told to lay on the altar. That's exactly what the parent of a prodigal child has to do. You have to trust God with this child. And whatever he is going through, all the pain, all the anguish, all the worry... And the Lord is telling you, take that child and sacrifice him. Put him on the altar and trust me with him. Trust that even if I order you to sacrifice him, that he's in my hands and nothing will happen to him. You have to remember when they're at the foot of the mountain... And he tells uh, his servants to wait there because he and the boy will be coming back down. That tells you that Abraham knew, knew that no matter what the Lord said, that even if he ordered him to sacrifice his child, that somehow Isaac would, be, would still be alive and come down with him afterwards. He knew that nothing would happen to his son. He knew that the sacrifice would somehow be supernatural, would somehow, even if he had to plunge the knife in his child's chest, he had the faith that the Lord would bring him back to life. I have to believe that because how else would he want? How else would he, would he believe that his son would come down, back down with him after, uh, after leaving him on the altar? And it finally makes sense to me from that perspective, from this perspective of, of the mother of a prodigal, that's exactly what it what it it represents to me. You, when my I've I shared this on Twitter years ago at the moment that it happened, when my son was a few months shy of turning fifteen, the Holy Spirit told me, "Pray for your son, because fifteen is the age in which strongholds take over in your family." And looking back through my family history at that at that moment, I realized absolutely. It does. Every bloodline has generational demons assigned to them. Every bloodline has its um, it re- the cycles that it repeats, and it's spiritual. It is spiritual. So I had everybody um, back then on Facebook and Twitter. I asked them for prayer for my son. Despite all the prayers that I know people sent my way, despite all all the all the, the praying that I have done for him. He still, he still wandered off. He's still gotten in trouble. His life has been spared multiple times by the Lord, by his mercy and grace over my child. And that's what I think. If I can put myself in Abraham's place, that's exactly what it felt like. You, you gave this child to me. You gave, you gave me promises for him. You've spoken over his life. I know what his future brings. I've seen it. You've, you've. You've, you showed it to me in dreams, Lord. But you, you're telling me to leave him on the altar. You're telling me to sacrifice my own child. But I trust you. Yes. Yes, they are. Thank you, sis. Yes, they are. They absolutely are.
I have to have the faith, and I do have the faith. Let me just clarify. I do have the faith of Abraham that he knew he would bring his son back down with him, that his son would be fine. Just like I know, and just like the mother and the father of all particles should know, if the Lord gave you a promise for that child, that child will be coming back down with you from the, from the, from the mountaintop. That child will be with you. That child will not be sacrificed. Not in the way that you are terrified that it's going to happen. Each one of us has our journeys. The prodigal sons and daughters have their own journeys. And sometimes it's a thorny, thorny path that they choose to walk on. All you can do as a parent is hand them over to God and let him, and let him take care of that. You can't push your... You can't keep shoving your list of, of promises to, in God's face and say... But you promised me. You promised me. He knows. He knows the promises he has for my son. He, sh he knows every last promise that he's given to me for my child. That I, I never would have thought. When, you, when I know my son and when the Lord tells me what he has in store for him, what he wants him to do in ministry, I'm, my jaw drops to the floor. Because he knows him better than I know him. And he knows the plans that he has for him. Despite everything that my natural eye sees, despite everything that he tells me he goes through, I have those promises. So I lay him on the altar and I hand him over to God. And God is faithful to bottle your tears. Mothers, fathers, or prodigals, he bottles your tears. Know that. They don't go to waste. And someday, when your prodigal is finally home, and you both look back at his journey, and how you witnessed it, the Lord will show you that bottle. The Lord will show you that bottle of tears. He's going to tell you, see? I saved them. I know your pain. And this is a reminder that I kept my promise to you. Don't feel alone. As a parent of a prodigal, other people just won't get it. They don't know the pain that you're going through. They can wish you well and, they, and, and God bless them for praying for you. But only you know the raw pain of, of, of worrying about your child. About wondering when is this finally going to be over, Lord? When will you finally give me the promises for my son? And he gave me an age, so. <sighs> and it's not, it's not tomorrow. But I have to lay him at the altar and I have to believe that he will come back down with me from the mountain. No matter what. So have faith. Have the faith of Abraham for your prodigal son or daughter. Have the faith of Abraham that he will come down transformed. The same boy that went up with his father was not the same boy that came down. Sometimes that sacrifice is necessary. Sometimes those cuts and bruises, are, those scars are reminders to him that he was marked for the Lord. And as a parent, you want to protect your child and hope and never, that nothing ever happens to them. Sometimes, things, sometimes God has to let life happen to them for them to for them to grow and mature, and for them to be the person they need to be in ministry. And we have to trust God with that pain. I know He doesn't understand it right now. My son doesn't understand it right now, but He will. I know He will. Because God, God showed me that he will. And all of that will not only be a powerful testimony, but it will make him a better minister, prophet, worshiper, deliverance minister. Everything that he is going through now is molding him to be the man that he has to be in ministry. And that brings me comfort as much as it brings me pain. I don't mean to be a crying master, folks, but it it just it just dawned on me how similar 
how similar that pain is. The, the father of the prodigal must have felt like he, when he handed over the money to his child, he must have felt like Abraham having to go up the mountain to sacrifice his child. But he had to trust God that he would bring him back. And that's why he was waiting for him. Every day he waited for his son to come home. Thank you, sis. I hope so. It, it blessed me. When, when, that, when, that, when that correlation hit me this morning, it blessed me. And I needed to come and share it with you because I'm, I'm praying that some parent of a prodigal will see this and, and, and find a new hope. You always hope as a parent, you always hope and you, and you wait on God's promises. <sighs> but I pray that this ministers to somebody who needs it today because I needed it. Be blessed, folks.